Hello there, welcome once again. My name is Jonathan Lagan, and I'm pleased to come to you uh, with this edition of Dreams, Revelations, and Interpretations. By now, if you have followed the previous episodes, uh, you should have gained a level of understanding and intelligence, basic intelligence, about dreams, the language of dreams, the sources of dreams, and how to interpret your dreams. Of course, we will bring more on that in our subsequent episodes. But for today, we just want to continue uh, from the last episodes. We started talking about uh, some looking at examples of dreams uh, in they had in the scriptures of the Holy Bible, dreams that men had from God and how they were interpreted then versus how it can be interpreted now to see if there is a consensus between the two or if there is a difference. Because I believe if you can examine a lot of dreams and get to know their interpretations from the Word of God, you will begin to develop a hint as to how you can interpret your own dreams. And we see a short of uh, word of prayer before we start. Father, I pray for my viewer, my listener, that you open our understanding through the spirit of wisdom and revelation, that our eyes may lighten by the power of the Holy Scriptures. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So last episode, we, the example we looked at was that of Joseph, the dreams he had, uh, two of the dreams he had before he was sold into slavery uh, to Egypt. Uh, we saw how the interpretations that the people around him gave those dreams then were not completely true, were not accurate. And that happened allow them or make them to miss what God really intended to do. Well, thank God for God's mercies that still allow their acts uh, bring Joseph into God's perfect will by sending him to slavery in Egypt and then subsequently he was going to bring his way to the throne. So we want to look at the dream of Pharaoh today, Pharaoh's dream. Uh, just look at it uh, inductively from the scriptures and learn some tips uh, about interpretation as we try to follow the stream of interpretation that came with his dream. Of course, you know God interpreted his dream through Joseph. So let's get to the word of God. Genesis 41. This is the chapter that contains the dream of Pharaoh. Then it came to pass. At the end of two full years, that Pharaoh had a dream. Now, um, I think in the next episode, or the next two episodes, we will examine two other kings in the Word of God in the Bible who had dreams. Uh, reason is so that we can see how the dream of one man can affect an entire nation and can change the economic, the spiritual, and social climate of that nation. So, but we begin to be with Pharaoh. And Pharaoh had a dream, and behold, he stood by the river. This is the dream now. He was standing by the river Nile, which is the largest and as at that time single river in Egypt. Suddenly there came out, there came up out of the river seven cows, fine looking and fat, and they fed in the middle. Then behold, seven other cows came up after them out of the river, ugly and gaunt, and stood by the other cows on the bank of the river. And the ugly and gaunt cows ate of the seven fine-looking and fat cows. So Pharaoh awoke and slept and dreamed a second time. And suddenly seven heads of grain came up on one stalk, plump and good. Then behold, seventeen heads lighted by the east wind, sprang up after them, and the seventeen heads devoured the seven plump 
of food and, and food herbs. Devour the seven month and food herbs. So Pharaoh awoke, and indeed it was a dream. And of course, we know uh, the remaining part of the verses after all the magicians and wise men of Egypt couldn't interpret the dream of Pharaoh. So let's look at Pharaoh's account narrating this dream to Joseph. Verse 14. And then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon. Okay, let's just go to verse 17. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Behold, in my dream I stood on the bank of the river. Suddenly seven cows came up out of the river, fine-looking and fat, and they fed in the middle. Then the old seven other cows came up after them, four and very ugly and gaunt. Take note of the state of the cows. Such ugliness as I have never seen in all the land of Egypt. I want to take a look at that sentence. It's going to be very crucial in the interpretation of this dream. And the gaunt and ugly cows ate up the first seven, the fat cows. When they had eaten them up, no one would have known that they had eaten them, for they were just as ugly as at the beginning. So I awoke. Also, I saw in my dream, same night, another dream. And suddenly seven heads came up on one stalk, full and good. Then behold, seven heads withered, thin and blighted by the east wind sprang up after them and the thin heads devoured the seven good heads so i told this to the magicians but there was no one who could explain it and before we go on to begin to decipher this dream i want to just pick two verses and read them to you here was the statement of joseph in verse 16. So Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. If we believe that dreams come from God and contain messages that relate to our future, relate to the plan and the mind of God concerning us, we should know that the very source of that dream will also give birth to its interpretation and the wisdom behind it. All right, Joseph still speaking, verse 25. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Now read one more verse, which is verse 32. And the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice because the team is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. I, I will like us to look at a few things before we go to read Joseph's interpretation of this dream. First of all, Pharaoh had two dreams in one night. And when we read in verse 32, it came twice, different dreams, but communicating the same message. That's because you will need a basic understanding of the patterns of God in Scripture. If you really need to understand things that are revealed. Our God is a God of patterns and a God of principles. When you study from Genesis to Revelation, you find God operating with patterns, a sequence in events, in creation, in everything that concerns uh, where the hand of God is involved. I believe the reason is those patterns can leave a trail that brings us into the understanding or into the know of what God intends, what God has in mind, or what God is about to do. So you need the understanding of patterns. And one of the patterns you must be able to understand in scripture is the symbol of numbers. We'll talk about that in another episode. For instance, one means something, two means something, three means something. Every number, especially that which was used in scripture, depicts or denotes something. In the case of two, two speaks mainly of agreement or witness. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, I believe chapter 13, 
that in the mouth of two or three witnesses a word is established. So number two speaks of, you know, to confirm something. Jesus said in Matthew 18, I believe in verse 19, that if two of you shall agree at touching anything, if two of you shall agree, two shall agree. So two is also the number for agreement. So when God is trying to communicate something to you, he may repeat it again so that you can be sure this is coming from God and it has been predetermined by God to come to pass shortly. Particularly if that dream contains messages um, about future events. Now that established, let's go into the dream problem. First of all, I want you to take note of the objects used in the dream. The first dream we had cows, seven fat and fine looking cows and seven ugly and slim cows, malnourished cows. And then in the second dream we had seven ears of grain that were robust, more like they were ready to be harvested. And then we had seven others who were thin and uh, blighted by the east wind as scripture tells us and according to the first dream the seven fine cows came out of the water and were feeding by the water why will pharaoh have this dream standing by river nine remember i told you the key to understand one of the keys to understanding these dreams is to realize that God will use common objects or events or, or or systems around us to communicate things that are supernatural or things that are way into the future. River Nile was the river of Egypt. It was a river that went round and surrounded Egypt. Ancient Egypt then depended mainly on agriculture to thrive. It, the, 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 they first uh, formulated the technology of irrigation. How that water was sourced from the river and then used to grow crops. All true because they had mostly dry seasons there in the year. Remember that from Joseph's the interpretation of Joseph's dream in the last episode. So that's the reason why Pharaoh was standing before River Nile. River Nile symbolized Egypt's economic system. Number two, the cows came out of the river and were feeding by the river. Cows are animals that depict productivity. From a cow you get milk, you get cheese, you get butter. You can also get the skin of a cow and that can be traded. You can also butcher a cow and the meat can be used for food. All of this economic advantage coming from one animal. So this was also another symbol of the flourishing of the thriving economy of Egypt. Now because they were well fed and fine looking, it meant that it was a season where they were going to enjoy a lot of productivity in their nation's economy, which was mainly on agriculture. The second dream Pharaoh had spoke about the heads of grain that were plumpy and good. Of course, we know that plants grow in respect to seasons. So these seven spoke about seasons again seven seasons where the harvest of egypt was going to be good but then from the first dream and the second dream we saw that there were 17 and ugly cows that came out from the water and uh, swallowed or ate up the other cows that were fine looking and then the east, the, 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 the grain, the heads of grain that were thin and blighted by the east wind that came up and then devoured the plump uh, heads of grain. First of all, understand that cows are heavy porous. Cows are not carnivorous, they don't eat flesh. 
So imagine if you had this dream, if you were the one who had this dream. The first key to interpreting will be to understand that cows cannot eat cows because they are not carnivorous animals. So to interpret it literally will be taking you far away from the significance and the very interpretation of the dream. Cows are carnivorous, but why would a cow eat and swallow up another cow? That's because these cows were not it was God was not referring to cows in itself but was re referring to their significance of productivity in respect to the economy of Egypt. So God was showing that there were going to be seven years of plenty and productivity. These years were going to be marked by bulk per harvest and productivity. So much that there will be enough to spare even to the next planting season. But these other seven ugly cows were going to come seasons with famine that will swallow up the productivity of the previous season in such a way that it may never be believed that there were seasons where they had or where they had bumper harvest and they had a lot of produce then the seven heads of grain that were plump and blue and the seven thin heads of grain that were blighted by the east wind of course plants don't eat plants <laughs> so, but this speaks of seasons because plants grow in seasons. So, when you put it together, God was saying one thing in two dreams that different seasons were going to come simultaneous to each other. One was going to be characterized with plenty and abundance, and the other one was going to be characterized with famine and starvation. This was going to affect the future. Another question, why seven? I will speak about that in our subsequent episode. God bless you. Thank you for this uh, time and episode.